They really just abandoned ship. Why would they do that? We have to go check. They might have left soldiers up there. We should be prepared. We could grab something heavy and swing a blow on the sub engine. Okay. From Old Ivan to Mama Grande. Last Australian to Pike. One life after another. One door after the next. Always moving forward. Hoping that what's in front of us is better than what's behind. We didn't work this hard just to get on board. We need to keep moving forward. Any news from down train? Javi's still working on it. The door's not responding. What we cut off from Big Alice? You get this door open? Yeah. This car to car shit reminds me of the bad old days. I was never this scared back then. Andre Layton scared. Don't believe that for a minute. Believe really it. <clears throat> never had this much to lose. What you don't realize as you're plowing ahead keeping score is that it's not so much about where you are, no one home, but who you're with. One train! One train! One train! One train! Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. This is a spoilerful podcast about the Snowpiercer series finale, The Last Stop. And the synopsis for this episode, Becky, even though it's the last the stop last of the train. One. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ooh. we don't know because uh, there was some news saying that the uh, creator and producer said there might be something in the future, but. I don't believe that until I see it or yeah, see it I, officially. I, read, I saw that and went and uh, did a bit of a deep dive. And as of right now, it's done. Yeah. So. It's a spoiler full podcast, everybody. So to keep you in the know how, yes, we are spoiler full. So if you have not watched the episode, have not heard anything about on the internets as it is, stop the podcast now. Go watch the episode, come back to us, and listen to our thoughts. If those who like to be spoiled, like I tend to do at times, <laughs> stick with us and enjoy our conversation and look for the cues and thoughts that we liked within the episode of particular characters, events that happen within said episode. It's really interesting with how they ended this now mind you the the episode was like maybe total of 46 minutes but they were able to start off where they left off and give us a final ending and then and it, it was, wasn't not rush it it was smooth it was good it was very smooth it wasn't fast paced you would think it is based upon kind of like an action thriller kind of film <laughs> But there's nods, in, uh, in my opinion, to the movie that we got years ago with uh, Chris Evans and Ed Harris and everybody else in that movie, um, because it had that same feeling effect. But yeah, before we get into that now, we're going to go right into the episode synopsis. And that is Nima heads for Snowpiercer. Leighton and the Tailies fight their way up train when Ruth is captured. Nima tries to cut a deal and runs to the rocket control room to initiate the launch sequence. Yeah. One train. We got it. Yeah, we got the one train. We got the one train. It's my first note. <laughs> yeah, the, the banging. One it was train. so awesome. Oh, yeah, it was so awesome because that, that comes from the movie. It comes from the comic. I will give you guys the information. I'll state it later of what the comic is and where you could find it. If you want me to put it in the show notes, I will do so. And if I do not leave them in, let me know in Facebook on the comments below. So that way it could lead you to it because they do have it on Amazon and you can buy it, whether it be in French or English. So, with that, we're going to move right in into the moments of the show that we liked. So, uh, 
Uh, do you I'm, have a first one? I'm sure you I have do. a ton. <laughs> it's a, it's about the intro. I love that yes. the main characters, every single one of them got a line yep. to the intro. Um, <laughs> but I'm surprised they did not give the number of cars. I think that's the first time in the series yes. that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, it, it literally was just a fight for their life, and they weren't at that point counting how many cars. It was. Uh, it would have been interesting if they put in counting how many lives in New Eden, mm-hmm. and how many people were at risk at this point during this this movement of what they have to do to save New Eden, save Snowpiercer, save Big Alice, and get away from. Nima and his soldiers and or vice versa because it, it's kind of like a bitter struggle because you could see Nima struggling with the soldiers and the stru- the soldiers struggling with him. Yeah. And, and it's like Nima has his own thoughts and views and it's so weird. But to hear Melanie say something, Leighton say something, Alex say something, in the beginning it starts off with Ruth. And you just feel the energy and vibe from the episode of all the seasons combined of where they're at now. And now, and to, like we said, spoiler full, we come full circle at the very end at New Eden and we, we get a celebration. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't end badly, everybody. It ended well. Yay! <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. It was, and it, sad. Just, it was very satisfying. I'm not at yeah. all yeah. disappointed. And it, and it puts a tear to your eye, too, of like seeing this, them reminiscing. You could see their battle scars. You could see their hopes and dreams of what they've been wanting, and they get it at the yep. end. And that, to me, is more important than anything. And it shows hope. And that one ending image that we do get yes as pixelated as it is and cgi'd as it is oh yeah on, honestly i just don't care i think that was on purpose though it probably was i yeah. don't think they would have done that yeah almost like a callback to the book um even the you know the comic the hmm. i don't know i liked it i liked the the way they panned out and it was i don't know i just thought it was neat yeah. Uh, one of my favorite moments, just to go a little bit in sequence, is Melanie finding out uh, from Alex uh, that Wolford is dead. <laughs> yeah. It, it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I have to I have to um, eat crow. Yeah. And say I was wrong. Wolford did not come back. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that. You just don't know with these shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just don't know. But the fact is that, you know, y- you see Alex at the time and she states it flat out. She's dealing with her biological father trying to destroy the world, basically in her own words, saying that the same way. And Melanie just at that point having to deal with this whole nonsense of and no. You know, Alex knowing who her father is of all people. Yeah. And and it, it it to see that mother and daughter coming together to go against him to stop him was very immense and intense. It's and, my- and and the fact that Melanie states it's like you're smarter than him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she shows it. She ends up she does. we'll get there, but uh, we'll get she ends there. up showing it. Yeah, she does show it. So uh yeah, that that was one of my favorite moments. Uh do you have another? Um I really loved it's kind of in my overall points, but I'll I'll say it here. Good. When Nima took the train off the tracks. The visuals, they did such an amazing job this whole yes. series with the visual effects and that everything they showed from the outside with that train was, um, I really, really loved that. Um, and then uh, one of the, when they're going, I, I guess, was it Africa they were going through? I think so. Um, it just was beautiful to see the frozen Apocalypse, you really get to see the the impact of the apocalypse that yeah, Nima the, created. The the land that had happened. Yeah. 
uh, one thing that I really did enjoy because we've had this word come up before and Wolford had actually stated it in episode previous, not the previous episode, but a couple episodes previously, the word leverage coming back. You love with, that word with Layton's crew when they need to get what they need during their fight in Snowpiercer. And then to see Leighton taking command and getting people back to where they need to be, not being the selfish bastard he was at one point because of his daughter and getting everything back that he wanted and needed for himself. He's bringing the community back to come together, to bring back and take over Snowpiercer to get where everybody needs to be, which is New Eden. And uh, it's like everybody all together to live. Uh, to keep the train and their community at Mm -hmm. this point. And it it just gave me vibes of the movie itself of the tailies taking over the front of the train. Cause the, if you look at it listeners and, and if you haven't listened to that particular episode, I don't have the particular episode on hand, but if you go through Spotify or Apple podcasts, Based upon this and scroll down there. Yeah. We only have like 270 some on episodes, but you could go back a ways about two or three years. Guess what? You'll find it. (laughs) And you'll, you'll find our first coverage of the movie. And uh, it just gives me uh, the feels and representation of that movie and the overall and the feel of the comic, that movie and the show are all the same. So I'm glad that the the showrunners and the writers left it that way. Mm-hmm. And that's what I liked about that is that it it's that full sense of the same story, but told differently mm-hmm. in a different way. So um, go back, listen to those. If you haven't read the comic, I will bring that up. I'm sure I'll be delving in and looking for that information for you to find it on Amazon. Well, uh, Becky talks to you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to add uh, just a little bit to what you were talking about, Leighton mm-hmm. leading the group. And uh, I think it's Ruth makes a comment about his attitude towards things. And he's like, well, I didn't have anything to fight for now then, but now, you know, he's got Josie, he's got his daughter. And um, it was just nice, just nice for them to not end him, end his character the dark, angry Leighton, but he was the way he started, the leader that was trying to make things better for everyone. Yep. Awesome. So I liked the action scenes um, when they go through and release the gas on the soldiers. Oh, uh, yeah. And then just plow through them. Yeah, Yeah, that was. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I liked I liked the the way they executed that. It was visually pleasing to see, and I love every second Boki was on the screen. If they move, they will hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I was really he's such a such a great character, and we didn't see didn't see him in every episode, and so when he does show up, it's it was nice. Awesome. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, the The one part I did enjoy <laughs> was seeing Nima, and we already I already spoke about this. Him still being controlled by the soldiers, but he's driven to see his rockets take glare and burst in the air <laughs> to give proof to his plight. Which his will, flag is still there. No, which will not let the people stand for. <laughs> 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 the manipulation that Nima tries with Ruth about having a leader for New Eden when the world starts to warm up again because he's not leadership. Uh, and uh, she called him on it, too. Yeah. She saw it. And I let's just I have a lot to say about Ruth when we get into points. Um yeah, but I loved. I loved that, and and he did that a lot through the, fi- the final episodes. Is yeah. he talked to he talked a good game, but nobody bought it, and yeah, I think that led to 
what he ends up, you know, his, his attitude and freak out. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I still think to, uh, in my thought pattern is that he was snow blind, not to put a pun to it, but he was snow blind because he wanted to see the brighter side of the world and it be warm because of what had happened, what he helped create. And uh, yeah, I wish he was on drugs at certain points, just like in the Black Sabbath song called Snow Blind, everybody. But uh, I, I think he was drunk with um, <sighs> ego at this point, very much almost like we've seen before with uh, with the commander before who we lost with Wilford Milius Milius. And uh, I, I, I but. Now that Milius is gone, Wolford's gone. It's like he has a sense of an empowerment, but in this case, it's his empowerment of, well, I help create this in this ice world. I want to fix it with these rockets, but well, there's a 50 50 factor. <laughs> well, it became his obsession, and yeah, he could not. You know, some people will die on their sword. They yeah. cannot let go, even though they he knew it wasn't going to work. He trusted Melanie's data. He knew that this was bad. Like he saying he wanted to hang on to Snowpiercer. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to hang on to Snowpiercer for research. He wanted to hang on to Snowpiercer because he knew that he was about to destroy a whole lot of people and he needed a place to live. And he was just... I don't think it was power. I think it was just obsession to for him to feel like he had to right the wrong. And even yeah. though in his heart of hearts, he knew it was not the right choice. He still had to do it because he was, he, it's like someone trying to tell you something, convince you of something, but they're really trying to convince themselves. That's Nima. Yeah. So he's got three people on his head. <laughs> <laughs> don't judge <laughs> yeah uh i i love how uh melanie's plea to alex and confessing how wolford manipulated her and didn't want that for alex yeah and it, it was like literally her breaking down uh but alex being driven to get things done just like melanie so she's just like her mother we all know this we all knew this in the very beginning when we first met alex at that first moment when she came into play and Melanie goes, uh oh, the door opens up and there's Wilford, not Wilford, but Melanie first. And then Wilf Mil Wilford comes out eventually. And then Melanie confessing that she is going to be there instead of leaving like she yeah. always does. And uh, and with a handshake, the mother and daughter agree about what has to be done. They're for each other and by each other's side at this point and working together, which is what we always wanted. We finally get that. Yeah. And I, I thought that was a really creative moment. And uh, it, it, it wasn't those, I'm going to hug you. I'm going to kiss and hold you. No, 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 no. Yeah. It was a mutual respect because you had to realize that Alex had grown away from Melanie even though, yeah, Melanie was her mother and she knows this and she was a little but kid. She didn't know her. She didn't really know her that well. But she that is her mother and she knows and she respects it. So as adults, they, they come together and they do this. And I think that was written and acted very well in I a agree. sense of how it was portrayed. For the fact that uh, I'm sure people would be like, but that's her mother. But yeah, but we didn't see the, well, before you saw this, this is what happened in the past. Yeah, we didn't that. Get that you know. <laughs> so you know that that I really like that. So if you, if for those of you that are binge watching from season one all the way to episode four, you will get that in the context if you watch it thoroughly, and get that opinion and thought. Uh, for those who are casually, it's like oh, like me, where I missed out on a season. But the thing is, I got it because I saw that one season when Alex was introduced and you realized there was something missing between Melanie and Alex mm -hmm. at that time. So I got that. But uh, it, it, sometimes there's always gaps in everybody's memories. Like, when did this happen? Oh, when did this happen? And 
I, sometimes I get that way too. Trust me. But uh, yeah, th- that was done very, very well, very well written, very well acted and very well directed. Uh, a lot of the scenes were actually uh, filmed very well. Uh, there's a couple of scenes, one of which that I really like because it's like the snow piercer coming around at the very end. Yeah, the did this thing st- how do you Ooh. steer this thing? Yeah, it was it stood out. So that might be the podcast artwork when you get this. So everybody, so if you look at it, it looks like that looks like a blue snail going around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be it. Uh, but I, I felt it was great that they both wanted to work, but both are stubborn and smart together. Hence why we have Alex anyway, to begin with Melanie and Nima's child is just as, or if not more intelligent than her father and can make things work, which we find out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Those were my notes directly verbatim. Everybody, this is as I was watching on my second try going. Tapping That's what away. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Tapping away. <laughs> um, my favorite scene, just for the sight of it, was seeing Snowpiercer's roof open. Oh, and then that oh. was so badass. Well, and during then, the rocket launch, yeah, yeah. and then wa- yeah, quote unquote rocket launch, and then watching Nima, Nima stand freeze. there, and it's it's like. Part fear, part astonishment at what's about what what he's done and Mm -hmm. what he's seeing. Uh, I think it was just and then he froze that way. And then that big aerial shot of him, this the roof open, the rocket launching, and then him right there in that small space. Yeah. That that was my favorite. Favorite, favorite, favorite scene. Him freezing a moment in awe of his creation of what yeah. had happened and what might have ha- come to be. But he did not see it come into fruition Mm-mm. of what would happen because, yeah, they messed it up. <laughs> yeah. And I'm because I, I sat there, you know, nervous. It was like, OK, well, what's going to happen? Yeah, I did not expect I did. <laughs> I didn't. I really didn't. I was like, how I said I was sitting there watching it go up and I'm like, how are they gonna explain this away that these people hopefully survive this? How are yeah. they gonna do that? And little Alex, that's how. That's how. Yeah. She like I said, she proved that she's smarter than her own father and mother combined. <laughs> Yeah. And did it because to see them working together, trying to unscrew the rocket and get all the <laughs> crap out of it. It's like something out of the Manhattan Project. <laughs> like, Do we really have to take these out one at a time? Not the Manhattan. Yeah. The Manhattan Project was a uh, a movie back in the 80s, everybody. So if you're really interested in that, we could cover that as well, too. On it's a good one. Cinema podcast. That was very much very original for its time, everybody. That's about nuclear weapons. In the suburbs. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I really enjoyed the fact that we get Ruth. You know, she is saved from captivity from the, the soldiers at, at a point and telling everyone Nima isn't sure that his plans are going to work and that he is not going to give the trains back to them, regardless if they work or not. Mm-hmm. Meaning that, yeah, he he's become almost a, a, a similar to the dictators that he had seen before him with uh, with Wilford and uh, Marius or what? What's Milius. His? Milius. Uh, Marius. Why, why am I thinking Marius? Oh, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> interview with a vampire. Anyhow. <laughs> oh, that book is so good, by the way. Um, I loved two Melanie moments, three Melanie moments. Um when she sees the bee carved into oh, Big yeah. Alice's engine, uh, that was both it, her and Leighton, huh? Both her and Leighton see it at the same time. Oh, yeah, that's right. And they have that look of like it was hope, but it was somebody who had hope. And yeah, and then it was until, a reminder. It was a reminder, and to remember those who had fallen to give to their cause. Yep. And one was her lover and Leighton had a lot of respect for Ben at that point, because 
you know, we were all upset when Ben died at that That's, time. Mm. That was a hard watch on, mm. on that episode. And uh, I loved how Till said, yeah, we had a ceremony. And and the fact that it's permanently carved into Snowpiercer with his name, his initial there, right there, you know it's going to be in memoriam and it will always be there for everybody to know who gave up their life to help. So I, I really did enjoy that for the fact that, you know, it, it was showing respect for a character that was mm-hmm. very important to the show. They brought him back for the the ending, even though they couldn't bring him back but i liked that they didn't linger on it it was mm-hmm. a moment everybody had their moment and then they moved on and it's actually carved into big alice not snow piercer oh um, sorry. <laughs> and then uh when melanie gave when they all was said and done and melanie gave javi the honors of running the engine mm. um I, that just was chills up my that, spine that made me think of how I thought of Ben and I was like, Ben would be so amazingly proud to see yeah. Hobby what hobbies that. become. And, yeah. Oh yeah. And then Melanie back at the mic. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, uh, we'll go in depth a little bit more about that, but that might be our intro at that point. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, because I don't know what I do until I start editing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just love that Bokey the Breachman becomes Bokey the Breachman again for help. And they needed him. And yep. Leighton says, we need my Breachman back. And he does that. And he does that and seals up the plugs up the holes because uh, his resilience to the cold and everything to bring everything back and, you know, the engine getting back and warmer. And the line that he states about uh, the gun hat. Oh, well, Leighton coming to his aid at that point because Bokey gets attacked by one of the soldiers. <laughs> and Leighton says, says to the guy, he's like, oh, you would have killed me already, but apparently you have no bullets. Yeah. <laughs> Called him on it. Uh, and it, But it gave Al- uh, Melanie and Alex the time to what they needed to get to the rocket at that point, which I thought was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. It was like, it's everybody working together at that point, but Leighton getting the crap beat out of him. And I feel bad for Davi Diggs. I'm wondering how many welts he got during that scene if he did his own uh, stunts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the one I was talking about earlier where Leighton put, when Alex and... um. Melanie get into the mm-hmm. rocket room and Layton's like, don't let anybody in there. And, you know, if he moves and Bucky's like, if they move, they will hurt. I just <laughs> love him. Yes. Yes. He was there. He's all family and they all know it. Uh, uh, the duels key sequence that uh, Nima does for the rocket launch. Does that remind you of anything? It's very nuclear codes. It reminded me of war games. Oh, I was thinking. uh... The war games in the movie war games in the very beginning, they showed two guys with two key codes and the triple flip up for how to launch the nukes. It just gave me those feels and vibes. But, you know, uh, it was like something was coming like a war or like something dreadful was coming and uh within that time we we do get to see melanie and alex working together on the rocket and like i said before they were frantically unscrewing and trying to get this thing undone to uh neutralize it at that point and, and i thought get, it was really cool that was and then they get busted and alex had the smarts to yeah as they're being forced to put it back together to take one little piece out, no, just thoughtful enough to know what that that would do, and she basically saved the world. Yeah, um, one of the best things, and we're moving a little far ahead, but we've been bouncing back and forth. Everybody, that's what Le- we do. The Leighton reuniting with Josie. That was not cool. I was I was worried at first. She was so was consumed too. by yeah. 
her wanting that revenge on Headwood that she like she wouldn't go with him to help him. She was like, I'm going to go. I'll, I'll be better, you know, going this way. And then, you know, he's trying to trying to ground her and she's just, no, I can't. I got to go. She was so consumed. So I was concerned that that was not going to work out well. It ended up working out a happy ending, but it did. Yeah. Uh, you got Leighton and uh, and her back at the very end. He actually yeah. talks to Ruth and saying, I'm going to spend it with my family. Uh, he's got his daughter back. Uh, he's got Josie back. So, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of scarring at the very end. When you see the celebrations, you see everybody's scars through these years. And that's not with just Miss Audrey, but you see it with Josie. You see it with everybody else that you know, even till and, and even sometimes with Leighton, but it's not with the physical scars alone. It's all the mental scars that they got to deal with too. And that's a good point about Josie. You know, she wanted revenge so badly, but when she gets to Headwood Mm -hmm. and of course we don't see, what exactly what happens, but when Layton enters, he's, I know he's, I was like, Oh God, what are we going to see? Um, and Hedwood's just sitting there crying. And I think it gave, put a little bit of brought out, I don't say put, she's always had it, but brought out a little bit of Josie's humanity and that realizing that they were all not under a spell, but they were all, they were all they all had a part to play and they were under the thumb of a horrible human being and everyone did what they had to do to survive and i think josie at that point mm-hmm. realized i don't need to kill her to feel better a she's suffering enough on her own yes. and b that's not that's not what this is about anymore no no it's not it's all about surviving and moving on and enjoying life in your family. And uh, I think that's what they kind of culminated at the very end when we get the ending. Uh, but like you said before, hearing Melanie with the announcement on Snowpiercer returning to track and being prepared to brace. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and as she talks, to the people of New Eden saying that their next destination is New Eden. Uh, then we get that cool, awesome celebration in New Eden. And Ruth and Leighton stating that they're still heads of the board of the community. So, um, you oh, know. Co-chair. Co-chairs. Co-manager. <laughs> do, you watch, do you watch The Office? Yeah, I do. Co-managers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought of. I chuckled at that. It was cute. Um, yeah, I've got points for each of the main characters. Go ahead. Uh, towards the end of mm-hmm. of it. So I'll read them and then you tell me what you think. Um, mm-hmm. We already talked about Nima and he couldn't see past his, he couldn't, he was so obsessed and he couldn't work through that. Um, Headwood trying to justify her actions about Josie to Josie. <laughs> and it's uh, it's a, you know, you see it every day of people just justify whatever they've done to try to save themselves. Uh, but in the end, she was just like everybody else. She was just suffering loss. Oh, look and at trying the shoes she was holding on to. Yeah. For uh, how all those seasons that she held on to those shoes. Yeah. Um, Josie, we talked about, you know, she had to seek her revenge. It was another telling of strength and forgiveness and mm-hmm. understanding. Yeah. Uh, when she chose not to harm Headwood. Um, Leighton finally finding the family and the peace that he's always wanted. Uh it, watching Davy Diggs <laughs> as Leighton smile through the remainder of during the party. Yeah. Was, uh, that was very rewarding after all that we'd seen him go through. Oh, everything was always sourpuss city or I'm angry or upset about certain things and determined. Yeah. And to see a smile on his face and, you know, it, it was very relieving for the character. Yeah. 
but uh you know with, with like i said with uh with josie and um the doctor <laughs> the doctor just needed to know how to i hate saying this everybody it's a bad pun let it go <laughs> she's keeping those shoes i bet she still has them wherever she is now if you get that reference everybody because you know frozen <laughs> oh <laughs> let it go I, was, I see what you did there i always thought you were talking about because she wouldn't let go of the shoes now let it go let it go <laughs> <laughs> oh, um i do want to spend a minute just just a ruth appreciation moment uh yeah. it was incredible watching her lead the people up the train and I'm glad that she finished the series and the leadership role. I think she was always meant to have. And it's, I feel like in, of all the people. Her evolution show, was to get to that point, honestly. Yes, and her character growth was the biggest, strongest, coolest, yeah. I think, of everyone else on the show. She changed the most. And it, I just, yeah. I, I love her and. I, I show I, cool. I grew to show respect for the character mm -hmm. as the seasons went by because you learned to hate her within the first season because you thought she was Melanie's little lap dog that did whatever she said based upon how this train was structured. And it got to that point of when resistance and change happened and her siding with people that she felt need and felt comfortable around. And then she showed strength in becoming that character mm -hmm. and then leading herself and to lead others to come out from that depth as a character. I thought that was very growing. And she, I, I think it, it, it's within the writing of the character oh yeah, and maybe and within any acting, the actress would probably put something into it and had conference with uh, the writers. I don't know. Maybe they'll actually get in touch. I don't know, guys. Let us know. <laughs> You're I always more that. than welcome to. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I love the most is she didn't do any of what she did out of selfishness no. or she was always thinking of the people. The people and that's that to me is what makes her the strongest out of all of them to execute what she's executed is she just she just did it because it was the right thing to do not because she would somehow benefit from it yeah it, it's it, it, it's a great character I think uh, a lot of the characters I do enjoyed over the years and they're not the leads per se would be till ruth uh Boki would be one of them javi ben and alex are the ones that i always looked forward to as far as characterization yep. and where they would grow uh people that were considered leads like wolford melanie Leighton is always prominent, and that was always the main drive because that's how the, the story starts. But to me, my my attitude was all the other characters that build up and add to the story, the the common characters that that give us that that feel, the levity and um, strength mm -hmm. within the story itself, and the way the writers were able to get these characters in there made it work. And I really did enjoy it. And it's, it, it shows with this quote unquote series finale, because we don't know everything's up in the air, everybody. But uh, as far as we all know, this is the series finale. Uh, Alex and Melanie, I'm going to group them into to one. Um, okay. We talked about her, Alex is smart, saving the day and <laughs> getting to have the chance to have her mom around, which is something she was robbed of mm -hmm. uh, by Wilford. Um, it was neat to watch that they have no more duties to do. They aren't going off to do research or they're not, you know, forced On a to mission. do this or that. Yeah, yeah, they just get to, they just get a chance to be mother and daughter, be 
citizens of New Eden just be. And I loved that for him. And they, nobody said it out loud. You could just see it on their faces when they yeah. walked off Snowpiercer together. And they're one of my quotes at the end. Um, yeah. Let, with that. Yeah. The Alex asking about the pocket of time they have with everything. Yeah. Within Tomorrow's that conversation. Never a promise. Exactly. And Melody stating that the data was inconclusive. And Alex saying carpe diem to yep. the world about their situation. I loved it. But just seize the day. And that's kind of loosely quoting everybody. I, I only have a couple of other quotes overall for the episode, but the, I I kind of picked up and threw that stuff in there to twinkle it in. Uh, not to make this an extra long episode of the finale, but you would think since this is the finale of Snowpiercer, we would be here for an hour and a half to two hours. Now, this is probably going to be shorter than most of the other podcasts right? we've done in this episode of the show. Oh, um, Javi, mm-hmm. after so much suffering at the hands of Wilford, both he and Sykes find a kinship with each other and yep. hopefully a budding romance. That was very sweet to watch. Javi had a lot of growth, too. He could have very easily, both he and Sykes, could have very easily succumbed to the torture that they suffered and and stayed in that place in their minds. But it goes to show what having, be, surrounding yourself with genuinely good people who do care about you, that you can overcome a lot and end mm-hmm. up happy so i'm i'm super glad that they gave him that sweet little happy ever after you got yeah. anything to add about him not really i think you summed it up very well <laughs> um and my last point uh last character is audrey and till i love oh. seeing them all snuggled up together yes afterwards you know till till all, i mean they've all suffered wilford was a dick but oh yeah um but when Audrey got up to sing, I'm not gonna lie, I got choked up. I'm I gonna, got uh, no, I had choked, a tear. Yeah. I had a tear. I got a tear come to my eye. I was so happy for her oh, because that was so I, beautiful. You, you would never thought she would get up to sing again. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> you know, you could see, and then she had that twinkle in her eye and looking at Till. Until the pride on Till's face, like yes, yeah. And That's and her asking, love. "Hey, would you tickle uh, the ivories for me?" As we yeah, do? and to see Miss Audrey up there and sing was amazing. It's a great song. Honestly, if they were smart, they would put this out as a vinyl with all the music that they have from yeah. Snowpiercer. So, the producers and creators of Snowpiercer, the TV series, please put something out there vinyl wise with uh, the actress who or whoever sang the songs for uh, Miss Audrey and the songs or anything of the soundtrack within for all four seasons. You could sum it up, honestly, and it'd be great. I think we'd all appreciate it. I'm sure there's a Spotify playlist out there. We got to dig for that. We got to dig for that. Yeah. But to see that, and it to me, it was like, I love the look of shock a little bit and pride on Till's face. Yeah. And, And the fact that the song was everything must change. And they're flashing over each one of the main characters, characters. little bits of dialogue mixed in, but you're just getting a glimpse of how everything has changed. And I'm going to skip on to the end. And then as she's singing and it, you know, zooms out past Mm -hmm. New Eden, past the trains, and it just lands on one little batch of flowers growing yep. that just blue flowers that are blooming out of the hope. snow and yeah. it's it's hope of literally of life and a new sense of life for everybody that was on snowpiercer in new eden and making a life for themselves and waiting for that change of environment on its own so whether or not they do come with a conclusion with this uh show or you know it could be 20 years later and where are they now with this community yeah. maybe we see liana as a young adult her and, 
and Grandma a, and, Alex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. An old, an old man, Grandpa Layton. Hmm. Who knows? We'll we'll find out in 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 the future. But for the most part, I, I think they they did give us a really good ending to the show. And I'm glad that they were able to come back for this season because mm -hmm. it was dropped for so long. And then, bam, we got it. And it came back on AMC Plus because it was on TNT originally. Mm -hmm. And it took about a year and change yeah. for it to come back. But the uh, all the actors were on board because they loved the story. They loved their characters. And they came back because AMC was able to put this out. So uh, a big thanks to AMC, a big thanks to Davi Diggs, a big thanks to Jennifer Connelly and everybody else in the cast and crew of uh, Snowpiercer TV Your show. Your work and effort was not. Not What's for. Yeah. Not for not. We yeah. appreciate it and it was amazing and we enjoyed it. And my last note is it's not exactly the ending that we we kind of hope to see further into the future but mm -hmm. we did get our happy ending yeah and a glimpse of hope that the world will one day turn back to normal and that's what more what more can you ask for it's it's closure and it was beautiful and it was uh, two thumbs up awesome I would say it's a bunch of thumbs up for me. <laughs> I only have two, so. <laughs> uh -huh. I'll, I'll throw my two thumbs and my two big toes. <laughs> there you go. I'm just going to hold my hands and feet in the air. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Praise it. Yeah. Anyhow, with that, um, uh, for notes, I'm just going to give you, a, I know I, I mentioned it to you guys. Amazon, if you go to Amazon.com, you search Snowpiercer, the graphic novel or comic, you will see there are three volumes that you can get. They're fairly decently priced. They are in English. So those of you in America, you can easily find it on Amazon.com. They're recently priced, like I stated. Um, let me see. The first one is called, uh, volume one is Extinction. And that goes for about $19, $19.99. You can get it in paperback because that's a hardcover one for $20. Uh, paperback is like $14.28. Um, they have them readily in stock. Uh, volume two is entitled Explorers. So that goes deeper into the, the lore of Snowpiercer. Uh, that's 1837 right now. And then $14.98 in paperback. Uh, I'm a hardcover kind of guy when it comes to that stuff. So I have a lot, a lot of my walking dead volumes in hardcover, everybody. So um, I like to do that as well as uh, Batman. And uh, there was the dark Knight um, master race that came out a while ago. I have them all in hardcover, very hard to come by, by the way. Um, and then there's volume three. And volume three, entitled, of all things, this is not Walking Dead related, Terminus. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get that for twenty three thirty six in hardcover. It doesn't show anything. Oh, yeah, paperback is $20.31. But they do have a box set graphic novel uh, that is available in certain places, but it's hard to track. Uh, it's got a whole five star review and it's $81. So yeah, that's what I was just looking at. Yeah. So if you get all of them, do you could do that. I believe I have, uh, the snow piercer volume one, which was from the French adaptation and not enhanced. Uh, they have also prequel volume two apocalypse. By the way, and that's for seventeen twenty six. I have the Snowpiercer Volume One, The Escape, which is a movie tie-in. So that's tie-in to the actual movie itself, which is what the movie was based off of. Just I'm gonna to go give, back and watch. Yeah, the movie I thought was done very well for its time. Very underrated. It was very dystopian, and mm -hmm. a lot of people thought it was like, oh, that was a downer. 
but well, it's the apocalypse. Well, I I was on um, Patty Tolman's uh, Zoom call once for uh, Babylon uh, B five events, and I got to talk to Ed Harris in between. And Ed, I asked him. I said, "Did you enjoy that?" He goes, "Oh yeah, it was a very different story, and I loved it because of how uh, diverse the characters were." Because you have people from the end, he goes Chris's character, my character at the very beginning as Will Wilford, and how everybody was treated in between. But the struggle in between, which I didn't really get to see, he goes, I, I was only in the specific scenes that I was because I was stuck in the front. <laughs> but, and I was like, Yeah, I know. I said, You had it easy. He goes, Yeah, but those were hot days. <laughs> <laughs> But um, because it was very hot and it was all metal and everything and you got all the lights on there. So he was cooking a bit, um, but he he enjoyed it and he loved the idea of the character. He actually enjoyed it, he told me. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said to you guys, we did cover Snowpiercer, the movie that had Chris Evans and Ed Harris in it. And I highly recommend it. It's very different in comparison to the show. Uh, it's more reminiscent to, like I said, uh, Snowpiercer, The Escape, which is the trade paperback, which is the original French novel. But the one that they have on Amazon, like I mentioned already, you can get for thirteen eighty two on paperback or seventeen seventy eight on hardcover. I have the paperback version, oddly enough. I bought it about three or four years ago, I think four years ago. Right around the time when the movie came out, uh, the movie, the, the show came out. Sorry, and um, yeah, that that's by Jacques Loeb and Jean Marc Rochette. So, um, which is so funny too, because Jean Marc is not related to Emily Rochette, <laughs> who who we know from our uh, set head family. <laughs> She's French Canadian. Anyhow, but they do have French and English versions, so you would have to make your choice and go from there. And if you choose to read, and I highly recommend it to everybody, it's always support your uh, local comic shop. If they have it at your local comic shop, they could always order it for you or go to Amazon Prime. But yeah, all those are available to you. Um with that, uh, that's all I had for any additional points and notes because I just want to give you that information. Awesome. Um, do you have any additional notes? No, we got thank you for letting me ramble through all mine. Um, <laughs> that's it. Uh, any quotes? That you yeah, didn't just get? the one that we said where Melanie and Alex are talking about the pocket and Melanie says tomorrow's never a promise. And Alex says, Carpe diem, it is then. I just I love that. Seize the day. <laughs> that it is. How about uh, you? I have two quotes left. And uh one would be from Ruth to the crew regarding Nima's plan. The eyes always show the truth, and all I saw was doubt in his eyes. It was good. Yeah. Or in his. Uh, and then the last one I would be from Till Layton. Do me a favor and kill this guy, will you? <laughs> <laughs> and that was when Till was being held at knife point, uh, at knife to the throat and the standoff with the soldiers at that. Yeah. Point. Yeah. It's just like, I don't care. Just kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Take me out too. I'm done. Yeah. It's like, shoot. <laughs> like, like, all right, this goes to Eternal and Cinema podcast when we covered speed. Shoot the victim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when Jeff, uh, I forget the name of the actor, but he goes, he goes to get a reason. Goes, Shoot the hostage. <laughs> it works sometimes. And he was like, you shot me, you dick. <laughs> but in this case, I'm sure Till would have been like, that's good. <laughs> yeah, she'd have been fine with it. Yeah. Well, other than that, all we have left is um, some feedback. So you want to start us off with our first form of feedback? Sure. Uh, this is uh, from our YouTube listener at Glitch, E-N-T-M-T, which I'm assuming means entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, 
What I love about this season is how all of the series villains have such a different personality to one another and how they all collide with one another. Wilford is the one who wants to be on display and have influence over everyone. Milius is the power-hungry, tunnel vision, quote-unquote, king. And Nima, the prideful scientist who thinks he can't do wrong. All great characters. This was a great episode. And that is some great feedback. Uh, Spot on, on all fronts. Yeah. Thank you. And keep it coming, too. Uh, If you continue to listen to us, let us know. Um, the last form of feedback we got was from our Facebook post, and that would be our friend Christy Coppage. And Christy states, Well done. I love Snowpiercer and enjoyed most of the craziness over each season. I'm thankful AMC gave us the opportunity to watch how it all ended. Long may she roll. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for those who sent in feedback. Please. Keep it coming. If you like what we do, please be some interactive. We we love it when we get to interact yes. with people. It's amazing. And thank you for sending in that feedback. Uh, other than that, uh, all we have left right now for you is some podcast recommendations. So, Becky, do you have any uh, any recommendations that you could send out to everybody? I... Uh started i didn't get to to finish but um i started the uh agatha all along um marvel tv cast that penny and jim are doing awesome uh but i still am listening to the vampire lestat so <laughs> i'm not i haven't done but i haven't done a lot of listening um to podcasts to podcasts because i'm so hooked on this book uh That's but i fun. did enjoy our um discussion on adrenaline cinema of queen of the damned if y'all get a chance listen to that it's a good one awesome cool how about you uh, for me, uh, yeah, podcast listening is like whenever I get to it, but I really do enjoy Kristen and Ben on the Revisited podcast. That is Wilhelm and and Podcastka with the Revisited podcast when they cover uh, The Good Place. Yeah. I just started it. Obviously, I just started watching uh, episodes one and two. I got through those. Didn't send feedback in yet, everybody. I will do that for the, the third episode. But I'm really enjoying the show. I love their take because their introduction, that's all I got to listen to, was the introduction about what they're going to talk about for The Good Place. And it made me, and I couldn't understand, holy shirt balls. Uh, what the, <laughs> what fork? the fork? What the fork? <laughs> I, I'm like, okay. Oh, I see what they're yeah. talking about. I've been saying <laughs> that instead of what i normally say yeah um, yeah but i i thought back. i i was thought i thought it was really good uh other than that it would be the cast of us with jason and lucy and their continual coverage of the rewatch of the walking dead up We're until the to... point of when we get daryl yes. dixon come back <gasps> so excited and, so i'm looking forward to seeing that i i got to see season one I wasn't overly entranced with season one, but yeah. I did admire it. I loved the scenery and the visionary of what they were cool, doing. It? Yeah, it was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it, it felt like I was watching a Godzilla film again with all the um, subtitles that I had to yeah. read because <laughs> everything was in French. Anyhow, but I did enjoy that show, but I'm looking forward to the coverage on that when they come back because De- Carol's going to be back. The I'm book cur- of Carol. The book of Carol. It's like the book of Eli or something like that. And the way they announce it, it's like the book of Carol. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's also TV podcast industries with their coverage of the penguin that hit uh, Max. Have you, you started it? I started watching the first episode. I got through the first 45 minutes because I started it late and it was late at night. I fell asleep. But I will continue to watch it because, oh my God, I'm here for it. They Colin Farrell is like interesting. Right now. now, keep in mind, listeners, as your comic book readers and your your fans of the Batman and fans of the Bat, 
this penguin is not your ordinary everyday mm -hmm. penguin you see in the comics. This was a, your typical mobster, very similar to what we got in Gotham, but better because you have a more of a caliber actor that's doing this and undergoes a lot of makeup to go into the look of this character and fits in it. And he's not American at all. <laughs> no, God, it's so good. It's worth, it's worth the hype. Yeah, it is worth the and hype. Where's that podcast? TV podcast industries, everybody. That would be Derek and John and friends. And Derek, John and friends. If you want a guest for the <laughs> penguin, please. <laughs> And they, call me. they they wrapped up their Umbrella Academy coverage as well, but they're also doing Agatha all along, just like Podcastica is doing with Penny and friends. And as I am going to be doing with, uh, hopefully with Becky and Steve in the near yes. future. Uh, we kind of missed it because of all the stuff that's been going on in our lives and me and my life and work, but also getting some of these episodes out to you and uh, life does get in the way at times, but we're getting them. We will definitely be getting episodes one, two, and three to you and our overall thoughts, where they come from, a little deep dives into the comics and the characters and where they come from, little Easter eggs that we get out of it. And if you watch the end credits or the intro credits, you'll see some really cool tidbits of um, pop culture in there of, or even ancient pop culture from books and things of that nature so we'll probably bring that up along so uh pounce the pixels podcast will be doing that as well as well as be covering other movies that will be coming out and that goes along with saying that we will be covering the crow yes it did hit digital download everybody and we will be covering it it might be a little bit of a bash fest but we're I gonna found get there. aspects of it. We will get there. It's still out there. If you haven't watched it, you, you have opportunities to get it on download. And I'm sure it's going to hit whatever streaming platform very soon because it didn't do well. But you give your idea and thoughts. And I will put the posts into Facebook and Instagram, all that good stuff. And you just give us our thoughts. Um, but other than that, uh, with that, uh, to give us your thoughts and your opinions and your feedback, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, facebook.com for, you know, slash panels to pixels. Like I said, there's an image always there of what we're going to be covering. All you have to do is leave it in the comments below. Whatever's in Facebook will go to Instagram at the same time. I'll see them. I'll get them. I'll get notified. I'll read them or we will read them. If you feel like you don't want to do that and you want to send us a straight out email, all you have to do is write that out and send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels spelled out panels two spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You get to write it out your thoughts and we'll read it and we'll give our comments as well. If you feel that's not enough, you know, we don't have any like call in widgets or anything like that but what you can do everybody has all these nifty new gadgets their computer during the pandemic everybody got a microphone and a headset <laughs> all you have to do is record your thoughts once you record it save it and add it as an attachment and you yourself could be part of the podcast your voice yes. could be heard uh i always say that just the same as if you wanted to be on too so if you have an idea or a segment or an, a podcast that you want to be on, let us know. I'll take that into consideration. And it'd be great to have somebody else on with another opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, we could play that as well. Uh, <clears throat> just like um, we, we had some feedback from Glitch Entertainment from YouTube. We could be found on YouTube. And you could leave your comments on the last episode that we created. And I would just get that that information. That's how I was get I got this that that one. That was from the last episode for, mm. for Christ's sakes. So anyhow, you could do that. Um, like I said, in you know, Facebook.com slash panels to pixels, Instagram at panels to pixels podcast if you didn't subscribe yet. 
YouTube, all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. Subscribe, ring the bell, and like. And obviously leave a comment. And then that will that'll give us any uh, indication of what's going on in the world. Uh, if there's a rating or review in Apple Podcasts or Spotify, which there is, all you have to do is just give us uh, a review and be greatly appreciated. Leave a comment. It would be awesome because that gives us a little bit more attention, whether it be negative or positive. I'm not saying like everybody. Yeah, I'm. I. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I understand when people are negative, but there's a positive side to negativity. I could change something, <laughs> or we could change something. Who knows? But let us know what you like or what you don't like. Uh, give us a five star review. They're always welcome and appreciated. And to show that I appreciate you, the listeners. And uh, word of mouth is always the best place to spread the word. Mm-hmm. Words spread like a virus, everybody. <laughs> Not to be negative, put that in a positive connotation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, here's at the point. Where else can people hear you? Becky. Here on Panels to Pixels and also on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Awesome. And as well as just the same with me, you could hear me on Panels to Pixels, Pixels podcast, as always. Uh, you could hear me on my other podcast, Journal and Cinema podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network, where there we cover action, adventure movies, suspense, thriller movies, well, basically anything that gets your adrenaline going. Uh, eventually, film Tropolis, which will be launching soon rob is trying to put the finishing touches but i'm hoping to bring rob back guess what he might be back for the crow so he could bash it Mm -hmm. i don't know (laughs) but he's got his own opinions but a lot of people are going to be bashing that movie but uh lara will be back with us rob and i are definitely going to be on becky is more than welcome to be invited to come on as well but uh that's what it looks like to be so in the end becky how does it end Well, that wraps up our coverage of Snowpiercer, 1,001 cars long. It has been a great ride. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This is Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.